on Morning Line. Our guest with us this morning is uh, Dr. Erin Calapari. She's from Vanderbilt, assistant professor of pharmacology there, and uh, really uh, quite knowledgeable on the whole issue as we're talking about opioids and addiction and the like. I wanted to talk a little bit about toxicity of things mm -hmm. like fentanyl, which yeah. you've said is so brutal. Um, there have been some stories reported of times where law enforcement response has to use Narcan on a patient that's overdosed or someone who's fallen out. and. After that patient's taken away, then some of these officers on the drive back to the station start feeling and are worried that yeah. they've been exposed. That could be anxiety. How realistic is it? And the reason I bring this yeah. up is someone may say, I've got Narcan and someone's overdosing it, but I'm afraid to touch them because yeah. if I touch them, will I get fentanyl on my hand? Is that a realistic concern? No. <laughs> no, okay. I, I don't think that's a realistic concern. Because sometimes with meth, it is. In meth houses, you go in, you breathe it. It's and, bad. Well, and that's because that's volatilized. And so, so, so this actually brings me <laughs> Which to... Which is different. I know yeah, meth is different than opioids. This is one of my favorite... Uh not drug fun facts, but so the thing that matters the most about how drugs get in the brain and how how they have their effects is, is kind of the root of administration, so how fast they get to the brain. So when you smoke something, it goes to the brain really fast because it goes through your lungs and straight through your okay. circulatory system into the brain. If you inject it, it actually is slightly less fast, but almost similar to fast to smoking, where it goes through your lungs, then your heart, then to your brain. When you're talking about something being transdermal, like fentanyl, like touching somebody, it's going to be a really slow onset, and the likelihood of you getting enough of that through there to actually cause any adverse effects is, is it's almost just nothing. not going to happen. No. And, and I think so. I think a lot of these cases, when you see, you know, I think if you're interested in this, there's a lot of really great scientists on Twitter. Mm -hmm. So Twitter is not always the best. Yeah. But if you want to find people who are talking about these problems and talking about drug toxicity, talking about how they work, follow the scientists that do this. And they'll comment a lot of times on these stories and say, this isn't possible and so but you can still see the officers maybe just being concerned anxiety as right. they drive along and they're thinking and feeling it and I totally sympathize with them they yeah. save lives left and right and then they're wondering gosh they see what happened to them could I have been exposed well, yeah. but, and I'm sure they're told maybe but they yeah. want to play it safe so I don't blame them at oh, all I, no I don't blame them either and I think here's the thing I think this speaks to kind of a breakdown in in the way that we have our system right we have the scientists doing this work but they're not I've never spoken to police officers right. in my job and you have police officers <coughs> dealing with these individuals you have social workers dealing with these individuals their children and these people aren't maybe doing the best job of sharing knowledge across spaces now this is where right. I think social media can right. be not great for a lot of things because it, it blows up these stories and says hey this is happening and we're as scientists we're like no no that's not happening and so I think finding better ways to have scientists communicating saying hey this is actually what's likely to happen this is actually what's what how we should be dealing with this I think is a really important next step as we see more people suffering from substance use disorder in our communities. Yeah. All right, so as we are getting near the end of the program, it's kind of like looking to the future now. Mm -hmm. We all know about the lawsuits that the pharmaceutical yeah. companies have had to pay yes. out because they had all these pill mills and all of that. The, the question is, besides regulating closely yeah. how much is given out, what about coming up with new pain treatments? And treatment of pain yeah. is such an important thing yeah. that are not addicting. Is there ever going to be something, we talk about marijuana maybe, or is there can be an opioid that doesn't have the negative side effects that they're working on? Is that even in the ballpark so, right now? So yes and no. So it's definitely in the ballpark. So so Vanderbilt, I love working at Vanderbilt yeah. for a number. I'm, <laughs> it's not because they pay me to say that. Okay. I actually do love working there. Um, so we have a really unique setup there. So we have basic researchers like me who who are looking at pharmacology, who are doing that. And then we have what is called the Warren, um, the Warren Drug Discovery Center, the Warren Center. And so what they do is they create compounds. We, we identify targets in the brain through our research. They create a bunch of different pharmacological, like sort of drugs, and then they test them. How fast do they get in the body? Can you mm -hmm. give them orally? And then we can go back and test those compounds in our addiction models and say, do they work? Mm -hmm. And so we're starting to try to develop drugs like that. Um, there's a bunch of people at Vanderbilt doing this. Um, the good and the bad. I think that we're going to be able to develop compounds that deal with pain in different ways. I think we're going to be able to develop compounds that you would give with an opioid pain management mm -hmm. system to maybe reduce addiction, vulnerability, but still have pain. One of the big problems is what motivates our behavior. Avoiding pain is rewarding. Yes. So the issue that you have is that, yeah, maybe the drug doesn't, is not addictive, or you can create drugs that aren't addictive, right? Or that are presumably not doing the same thing, but just doing a pain block peripherally on a nerve might actually also drive. Be enough to be a drive. Mm -hmm. And so, but, but here's the thing. We have to think about our society 
pain is a really big part of our society and these people are not they, they're not able to have a quality of a life without these pain management so we have to find ways where those people who need them have access to them right. are monitored are educated on what what is dependence how is that different from addiction how do you get the treatment you mm -hmm. need and then at the same time have researchers like myself and other people developing compounds that maybe reduce the likelihood of dependence or addiction vulnerabilities so you can have less drug being administered i think it's a complex problem it's a complex problem that needs more smart young people trying to solve it and financial support from the community and the yeah the country and I'm just trying to think of making it more difficult to abuse any of the drugs that's the other part yeah. of it uh, you know sometimes they grind up the pills we were talking during yeah. the break about how now they're making gummy pills that you can't grind up liquefy yeah. and then inject but is there also something you can give people I, I don't know one of the drugs when they're going through treatment where they take this drug and then if they take an opioid it makes them sick and so, like, so that's the, not the effect I wanted so they have that for alcohol um, yeah. alcohol use mm -hmm. disorder but here's the issue with that is people just don't take it. Well, right, uh, yeah, and exactly, so, so exactly. It, I think it, it works for, it's, it's called ants abuse, essentially you take it and then if you drink, you get sick. It, but then like people it, decide they want to drink and they don't take it because right. it's an easy way to do it. I think a couple, no way you can force them with to do pain it. medicine yeah. it's been really difficult because you need it to work fast, but um, people have done this with other drugs and it's been pretty effective. So with, um, again, my side is stimulants. So um, when you think <clears> of ADHD <throat> treatment, so stimulants are actually really important for ADHD and narcolepsy treatment. Mm -hmm. But what was happening before is that people were grinding those pills up and using them because it's the same thing that's in a lot of these. It's not cocaine, but it's amphetamine. Um, so what they started doing is making these drugs that need to be metabolized in the liver before mm. they work. So what mm. that does is it makes it yep. slower. It so makes how fast it gets into your brain slower. So what happens is people don't take it to get high anymore because it doesn't make them high. It's just, so understanding how drugs act in the brain and what causes a high and what doesn't right. is actually a really cool way for us to work with pharmacology to have drugs that have their target activated, but in a different way, slower, faster, extended release, different uh, things like th that. That sounds like one of the great answers maybe for reducing abuse. Yeah. Because then the, what's the appeal of it? As far as um, resuscitating individuals, Narcan's still the best thing we have mm -hmm. on the market right now, even though now we're seeing four or five Narcan doses having to be given because some of the, what, what's next after fentanyl? What's more powerful well, than fentanyl? Well, that's the problem. There's we, some other crazy stuff coming well, down the pike, right? I, is, elephant tranquilizers, I don't know this what. Is, this is the thing that is a problem with, it's a societal problem. So uh, alcohol is a really interesting thing, right? We evolutionarily evolved to be able to consume it. It's how we started storing food. It's, mm. it's so it was necessary. Fermentation creates oh. alcohol. Being able to metabolize alcohol is like integral with our evolution as a species, yeah. which is kind of neat. But then what comes with that is you can get drunk and then people want to find new ways to alter their state of consciousness. So what happens? Well, we regulate things <laughs> like stimulants and then people make bath salts. And then we right. regulate those chemical structures and chemists make new drugs. Mm -hmm. And so this is kind of a problem that if we don't address it as, from a societal level, give people support, educate people, it will keep going because people will just make the next drug and the next drug and the next drug because that is what's happened so far. Do you ever, uh, guys, this is a whole other show, and I'd love to have you on again, but I mean, do you ever, you know, interact with those of you in other countries? I mean, yeah. uh, I'm just curious. I mean, we obviously have a big problem with it here. I'm sure many other European yeah. countries have drug abuse problems as well, but are there some countries that we can learn things from that are doing things any differently? Uh, to your knowledge? So there are, I, there are countries that are doing different things, not necessarily on the pharmacological angle. So, so we do. We actually have okay. international conferences and things like that, which is a really great time to do some international travel, but mm -hmm. also to talk to people from other countries and talk. A lot of the differences tend to be policy-based. And so, you know, there's lots of debates that I'm not going to get into my opinions on that are about access. So, so you know, we say, okay, people are going to IV inject drug. They do yeah. that. So some countries have needle exchange systems where they say, here, you know what, you're going to do it. Here's a safe place to yeah. do it. And it reduces harm. And then so there's this debate about harm reduction. And in those countries, they've had pretty, they've had good outcomes from it. Mm -hmm. They reduce deaths. And so then the question as a society becomes, you know, how, how what do we value? How do we do that? And, and so right. pharmacologically, not as much because a lot of us work together. I mean, this is the great thing about this age of internet and Zoom and all of these things yeah. that we're constantly talking to people across the world with these kinds of things. We're publishing our work. It's available to all of us. And so there's, it's, it's, it's a world problem we're all working on. And it's yep. unfortunately a little bit off, I think, before we can solve it. It is, but I think shows like this are important. If anything else, I hope people who are listening today have a little bit better understanding of the nature of addiction and why it affects, and that it's, you know, once someone gets grabbed hold of it, there's not a lot they can do about it, and they need help. Yeah. And, and to blame or say, you know, I don't really care, 
Um, about that, that's just some addict. I mean, if you just want to be selfish about it, um, you still want to help because it's a big societal problem yeah. and you're paying for it. But these individuals have families, loved ones, and I've done too many stories where I've seen people get hurt from the individual who's under this horrible addiction and either they die yeah. or they just waste away and don't care for the family anymore. It's heartbreaking. It's it's. Awful, and I think that I think as as a community, I, th I think that it, you have to think about it from this way. Like, if your neighbor got cancer, you wouldn't go over and be right. like, "Oh, well, maybe you shouldn't have eaten this thing. Maybe you shouldn't. Or maybe you would, but you should not do that." No, but no, no, addiction is the point. Addiction's the you same. It's same. It's the same thing. Like they, there some. Maybe it's decisions. A lot of times, I would argue that it's not because, again, a lot of people drink and don't have an alcohol use problem. So, so you never. So you never know. know. Yeah. Dr. Calipari, thank you. Thank you this so much. This has been a pleasure. Maybe we can do this again. Yeah. I really, we can't talk about it enough. Yeah. We'll see you soon. Thank right, you again. Thank you so much. Take a break. Be back with the programming right after this. Stay with us.